HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have previews of Hiller Tennis and Boys and Girls Lacrosse. We have scenes from the annual Creative Circles Arts for All event. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. On Marathon Monday, the second annual Hopkinton Marathon Spectacular will take place at Weston Nurseries. Second annual Marathon Spectacular is going to take place on Patriots Day, April 15th, so Marathon Monday, at uh, Weston Nurseries, right at the one mile marker. We did it last year and it was 38 degrees and raining, but we still had a very good turnout, so we expect a, quite a large turnout with good weather this year, and we know we're going to have good weather. Uh, like last year, we've got bands. We've got food trucks and we've got uh, Startline Brewery as a co-sponsor along with Marty's Fine Wines. So we will be open from 7 to 4 and you can get here at any time. It's easiest to get here before 7. The roads are still open. After 7, we put very succinct directions on our website so people can figure out how to get here and park. No problem. Uh, the Hopkin Police have been terrific. They're going to cooperate with us. So basically coming in from the north is the way you have to do it. And uh, we expect to get a big crowd in early. We'll have uh, the Muffin House, I believe, is committed, which is great. And we've got uh, Say Cheese. We've got PJ's Barbecue. We've got uh, Goody's Kettle Corn. Snappy Dogs. So we've got all those food trucks, and we have Street Food RX as well, and they have gluten-free and vegetarian options. So we got something for everybody here, breakfast, lunch, uh, Ted, Twenty from Startline Brewery and his brother-in-law Jeff will be here serving uh, uh, the beer and uh, Rachel from Marty's and her team and some of her suppliers will be serving Prosecco in the morning, mimosas and then wine throughout the day. Uh, this year we have a DJ, this guy named Gary Titus is coming out here, he's kind of a well-known DJ in the area and he's going to keep it more of a party type atmosphere, keep it going all day. So he starts in the morning and he comes on between sets. The three bands are the, uh, the F-Tones, they'll be on around 11.30. And then we've got Steve Spector and Hot Acoustics around 1, 1.30. And then the last band is called Soul Function Boston, and I think they're based out of the Bose Corporation. And they've played around the country quite a bit. They're pretty well known, and they've got a large uh, group um, of people. They've got uh, about 10 or 12 people in their band, so they're going to finish off. But it'll be fun. It'll be danceable music with the DJ going on in, in between, uh, plenty of tents. Um, the whole fundraiser is for the 26.2 Foundation, which is going to raise money in part for the International Marathon Museum, which is just in the early planning stages right now. So we're hopeful that um, people come out to support that charity. We charge $20 for tickets up to the day of the event and $25 for tickets the day of. Uh, beer and food is all a la carte. Beer is gonna and wine, I should say, is five dollar uh, drink tickets, and then the food is is a la carte. So all the net proceeds for this event go toward the twenty six point two foundation. Terrific. And do you recommend people get here early due to the marathon, or can they pretty much come in at any time? So come early if you can. Be here before seven, before they close the roads. But after they close the roads, they can come at any time if they follow the directions on our website. So go to our website www.westernnurseries.com, click on the event, Marathon Spectacular, and it's very, very spelled out on how to get here. It's a little bit further around, but you can come in through the back roads and park, no problem. The Marathon Spectacular is a family-friendly event, and there will be many fun activities for the children. So the admissions is $20 per ticket before and $25 the day of. Kids 12 and under for free, so bring families. Certainly. Um, there's a whole kids area where we'll have games and that's sponsored by the YMCA this year. So there's plenty for the kids to do here as well. 
So some of the kids' activity include this game called Gaga. Uh, we've got that going on, which is kind of a dodgeball type game from what I understand. Uh, there's uh, Connect Five, there's giant Jenga, face painting, and, and cornhole going on. So there's a lot of activities for not just the kids, but for everybody. If you are worried about seeing the marathon, in addition to the marathoners running by, there will be a big TV on site. New this year also, we're going to have a 12 foot by 8 foot giant television inside our 40 by 60 foot tent that's going to be broadcasting the race. So that kind of creates a little excitement to see who's winning at any given time. Of course, our, our own home, homegrown Tim Kilduff will be on the back of the WBZ truck and you'll get to hear him throughout the race as well. So we have that going on too. For more information about the second annual Marathon Spectacular event, visit westonnurseries.com slash Marathon Spectacular 2019. Hiller Boys Tennis has hit the courts and they are ready for the 2019 season. Here's a look at this year's team. After finishing 11 and 5 during the season last year, Hiller Boys Tennis is ready to go. Led by experienced captains, Nalen Storm and Andrew Keeley, the Hillers look to make some noise in the TVL. And uh, how long have you guys been playing tennis for? Um, not sure how long. I, I've been playing since elementary school at some point. Um, we played together for a while at Westboro Tennis and Swim. Yeah, I've been playing about seven to eight years. My fourth year on the tennis team. Terrific. And um, how, are you, how are you liking uh, playing for the Hillers and how does it feel to be captains this year? Uh, we love it. Um, it's a great team this year. Uh, really looking forward to a great season. Yeah. Um, we love um, having fun with the team. Practices are always fun. Um, love doing uh, social events with the teams like Spaggers and hanging out outside of practice and outside of games. And uh, can you talk a little bit about the team this year? Is there a lot of returning players? Is the team looking good? What are your thoughts about this year's team yeah, so far? Very similar to last year, uh, player wise. Uh, we have two new additions and we're looking forward to seeing how they do. Yeah. Um, we think this year will probably be our strongest year. In, in all four years yeah, that, we've, that we've played. This group's been awesome to work with. Um, we have the majority of our players back this year, unfortunately. Uh, we lost one to an injury, who is currently inside working out right now, trying to do his best to get back from a broken foot injury that happened at the beginning of the season. Um, we graduated one senior, and so we've got the good nucleus of our players coming back this year. So. This group's been great to work with, and a lot of them are, have been on the program for four years, so you get to know them a little bit more on a personal basis, aside from the tennis aspect. And anything you ask them to do, you know, they do it. Um, and they, they go out and they, they battle each other every day. They, they're a great group. They enjoy each other's company. You can see they have a lot of fun, you know, on the courts and off the courts. So from a personality standpoint, they're a great group to be around. And uh, can you talk about your captains this year? I understand they this is their fourth year uh, playing for you. Uh, could you talk about what it's been like to coach them? Sure. It's always great to see you know players stay in the program for a long time, and they've started with us since they've been freshmen. And we actually just talked a little bit about it earlier how they actually started you know playing first doubles together and worked their way up. Um, so you couldn't really ask anything more from them. Um, they certainly set the tone when it comes to getting these guys ready to go on a daily basis. They're around each other a lot, whether it's going out for, for dinners, you know, as a team, um, and really bringing the group together. Um, that's an important dynamic. Um, you know, when they're on the court, for sure, they're competitive. When they're playing against each other, which they do often, they want to beat each other. So they have that great opportunity and they take advantage of being able to push each other on the court and bringing the whole group together. Terrific, Coach. Um, what about some of your younger players? Uh, is there any up-and-coming talent to look out for? Sure. We've we've got uh, one freshman that's that was that's on the team this year. Um, he's not with us today. He wasn't in school today. But um, Spencer Smith is definitely looking good. Um, I think he's he's coming off um, you know from where he was before the other school. And doubles is looking like it's going to suit him very well. He's an athletic kid. He's got some very natural strokes. I think it might just take a couple games for him, you know, to, to get back into the groove before he's fighting his way into the lineup. I, I completely expect that he's going to be battling, you know, two or three of those players for that spot. So it's always good to have new and up-and-coming players that can push the players that are above them. It forces them to get better. It forces them to get out and play. And obviously, 
you know, the better that you have, the better players that you have as a team, it pushes everybody to get better. So the competition within the team is, is fantastic this year. So we're looking to get going. We have our first match of the year tomorrow. It's a non-league match against Whitensville Christian. They're always tough competition. So it'd be great to get off to a good start tomorrow and see where we are. Right after our short break, we'll introduce you to this year's Hiller Boys and a Girls Lacrosse teams, and the annual Creative Circles Arts for All event took place, plus Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. This week on HCAM Ed, the Hopkins School presents their annual fifth grade talent show. Welcome back to HCAM News. The new turf at the high school has certainly been a big benefit to this spring's Hiller teams. Both boys and girls lacrosse got a practice in on the new turf at the same time. HCAM News was on the scene to catch up with the coaches and the captains. Hiller's boys lacrosse reached the playoffs and finished 11 and 8 last season. This year, they are ready to pick up where they left off and hoping to go further. Uh, it's been great. It's been fun coming to practice every day. We got a really good group. Uh, they're responding to coaching very well, and, and we got some good talent back, so it should be an exciting year. Terrific. And um, the season starts tomorrow. How have the uh, practices gone uh, so far? Um, it's been great. I mean, you know, we're standing on a new turf right now, which is awesome. Um, and just, you know, Mother Nature's been cooperating. So we've been outside every day, which is, you know, new for us. That's the first time, you know, we've had, we haven't even had to have a gym practice yet. So our spacing's down and, you know, there's obviously things that we need to clean up, but, you know, just like everybody else in the state, but we're not, you know, we're not at a disadvantage this year with, you know, practicing in the gym. And what are some of the things you're working on here in these early practices? Um, we're just trying to get our spacing down and, uh, you know, just we, we put in a new system offensively this year where we're trying to get, you know, accustomed to and, you know, it's, you know, trying to pull out the best at our players. So. All right, well, we wish you the best of luck against Holliston tomorrow. Thank you. Practices have been great. Uh, we're working hard, focusing on fundamentals and our spacing, like Coach said, and uh, it's going to be a fun season. Uh, so far, I think we're looking good. We're playing good team ball. Uh, we've been working a lot on the new offense. It's looking pretty good so far. Defense, we're putting in some new packages as well. Uh, we've got a good test Friday, and we're excited for it. Uh, things are looking great so far, really meshing as a team. We've been working a lot on our uh, communication and just getting those slides down. I think we're in for a great year. Terrific. And uh, do you have any personal goals you want to accomplish this season on the lacrosse field? I just want to get better and help my teammates win games. So uh, some, some personal or team goals that we all have are focusing on 100% effort um, every day at practice and coming with a great attitude to uh, just make for a great practice every day. Hiller's girls lacrosse also made the playoffs and finished 11 and 9 overall with a good amount of returning talent they are hoping to get back into the postseason. All right coach, uh, can you talk about how the team is looking so far this year? Sure, yeah I'm really excited. We're, um, we're looking really good. We're in week three right now. We have um, three seniors, four juniors who are being, they're just showing themselves as great leaders on the team so far. We have 13 returning varsity players which is really fun. So we're kind of just starting where we left off last year. Um, and the girls are working really hard. They're putting in a ton of hard work. You know, it's really nice just to be back on the field and for spring to be here and lacrosse season starting. So we're having a lot of fun. And what are some of the things you're working on here in these early practices? Sure, so a lot of fundamentals. Um, we're going over a lot of stick work, footwork, fitness, just um, just good foundation to start the season with. And then when we start playing games, we'll start adjusting things, we'll run a game plan before different opponents, um, go over things like that. So um, yeah, the first three weeks the weather's been great. It's been really fun to be out here and just play lacrosse and just work on the just important
foundation of the sport. So. Are you happy to be on the turf to start off the season this year? <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, it's so nice. It's just, it's it's been a great facility to have um, at the high school on the high school campus. So we're right. really we're really happy to be out here. Uh, Sydney, can you talk about how things are going so far? How's this group looking? Um, I definitely think that compared to last year, we're definitely more of a cohesive group, and there's a lot more group chemistry in some ways. Um, we're looking at our schedule, we just looked at it and we're really hoping we can go farther than we did last year. It's one of our goals, it's looking good. Terrific, and uh, Lydia, how's things looking uh, for your group this season and how do you think the team's looking? Um, I think it's looking really great. We have a young team this year um, and everyone's working super hard. So I think, um, like Sydney said, I think we're definitely gonna go hopefully farther in tournament and um, we were really working together well in the field so I think it's gonna be great. And how does it feel to be on the turf this early in the season? It's great. Short sleeves, shorts. Couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah. It's so nice to have the turf field here at the high school. It's really great, yeah. This past week, the annual Creative Circles Arts for All event took place. Local artists gathered at the Center for the Arts to talk about their work. Here's a look. Recently, at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, Cynthia Franca, along with Jerry Holland, hosted Creative Circles Arts for All. There was 30 pieces of artwork on display and the artists in attendance had the chance to talk about their pieces of art. So we have almost 30 pieces here, so it's very good. Uh, between different generations, we have like eight years old and other eight <laughs> sharing art, so we're very excited about that. <laughs> So our mission is exactly that, like share contribution, inspire each other, and build together an um, artistic and cultural community. So we are very happy to have you all here. Thank you so much. And it was like a stream, uh -huh. it was flowing and it froze. And the patterns were just amazing. So it's, it's kind of like you have to, yeah, sometimes you find amazing patterns, but it's hard to find a composition. But um, So I'm just like going along trying to find the composition. I like the way it looked like it was flowing out of here. Mm. And um, it's, it's also like I've had two people talk to me about this piece already, and it's interesting just to see what other people see and what they think about it. And um, because... You know, I, like I saw an egg shape, but other people saw other things, and just the way it flows. That's all about I, I always enter the photo contest every year, and they're more of my nature photos, like bird mm -hmm. shots. Okay, good. Um, and so they, this year, this year they put one of my uh, flickers on the cover of their magazine. And last year I had one honorable mention, so they put a picture of Wasik on the back of um, that was my honorable mention. So it's just nice to you know, it's nice to share your photos because I do you do it and you do it isolated without anyone seeing your work. So it's really nice. It's just I don't care. I don't need to get paid as long as you know it's nice to just share. I bought uh, sunflowers and they were on my table and they last a long time. There's longevity to uh, sunflowers and as they changed each day I would pull out my pad of paper 72 years old sitting there with my watercolors <laughs> and painting and just having a grand time and uh, this the one that's really intricate took me a few days to do and then I thought, that's really not how I do paintings. I like to go to my soul and find out what's in there, how I feel about sunflowers. And uh, so that's how these came into the picture. Uh, you know, what's in there? They're so joyful. In fact, mm -hmm. I read a quote um, about sunflowers. And it said, sunflowers uh, are a symbol to remind us to go to your instincts, follow your instincts, your joy, and the light inside of you. And after I read that, I thought, that's what that painting's all about. <laughs> I was roaming around looking to see if there's something interesting around the creek that I could take a picture of. And I looked out, and there's this old uh, cupboard door just resting there in the creek, I mean, reeds, and 
those are the kind of pictures that I hope I always find because I'm looking for angles, patterns, textures, but in unusual ways. If we go to a building, sometimes it's a wonderful door, but I think the doorknob and the way it is set or something is more attractive than the whole door. You know, so uh, this was in a show in Hudson at their art uh, society and it won third place. So I thought, well, it's pretty good, so I shouldn't keep, working, <laughs> keep showing it. Uh, and uh, I just, uh, when we go, we travel a lot, or we did travel a lot. Uh, I would take the traditional pictures, but when on tours or anything, when the person is showing something that everybody's going to take a picture of, I kind of go around back and see what's behind this thing that's so different. So I come away with pictures that no one has that probably will be in a show like this, but I have to tell where it is and what it is because everybody else's has the regular form of the building or whatever. So, oh yeah, this is the such and such building. And I have to say, and this is the doorknob. <laughs> uh, soft pastel, and that's basically what I mastered was um, pastels. I used to do portraits of ballerinas, actually. I started up in Rochester, New York, and that would take three months to do, and, you know, six months. And, you know, I came here, and, and I went, the heck with this, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so I started to just to have fun with it. and. The color and the form, and I, I named it Blaze just yesterday. Yes, you have to give me a name. You have to give me a name, Nancy. But honestly, I'm not working in soft pastels anymore right now. Um, basically, uh, my granddaughter, she likes the ink. She's five years old. She loves to create, but I won't let her touch paint right now. And uh, but I do have some watercolors that are iridescent, and she goes to it. And I'm basically just working with them. Um, the, when we had that snowfall recently, mm -hmm. and I looked outside and the branches, yeah. you know, talk about the shapes and the forms. Oh my goodness, I took pictures and then I would bring it up and I go, this is perfect, I like this. And I just started to um, uh, draw it out on paper, on watercolor paper, and then I did the iridescence. And so my granddaughter came the next day and she wanted to create something mm -hmm. like that. And so I'm just kind of having fun with that right now. View more at our website, hcam.tv. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, April 5th at 5 p.m., poet and musician duo Phil and Trisha Knudsen are back sharing more of their work on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, April 8th at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, April 9th at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, April 10th at 7 p.m., Hopkins School students gather to share their incredible talents and abilities in the fifth grade talent show on a new HCAM Ed special. On Thursday, April 11th at 7 p.m., the Hopkins Appropriations Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on Friday, April 12th at 9 p.m., Cheryl Peralt sits down with HCA co-director Kelly Grill on a new episode of Meet Your Neighbor. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Lacrosse versus Holliston game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy, 
We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and we'll talk to you again soon. French folk tone, and it's called A vous dérige maman. And the the French uh, translation of that is Oh, shall I tell you, mother? And it goes on as far as the lyrics. What is the Oh, shall I tell you, mother? What is tormenting me? Daddy wants me to reason like a grown up. Me, I say that sweets are worth more than reasoning. <laughs> <laughs> but that. Uh, the title and tune was uh, used by other great composers like Bach and um, Liszt and Sanson and I think Haydn. And uh, so uh, what Mozart did, well, he wrote variations of it. He wrote 12 of them. And I heard it just yesterday as a coincidence when I was in the car. And what he did was um, like it's fast, it's slow, it has a counter melody, the right hand's doing quarter notes, the left hand's doing 64th notes. So it's all these different uh, variations of it. So uh, I really got interested um, in doing this painting because I'm taking music lessons here. Oh. And he's in that particular tunes in all my uh, three books because I'm taking saxophone, clarinet, and flute woodwinds. So that tunes in all of them. Of course, it's ceramics. Uh, I took some classes last year, ceramics classes here at HCA. And when I was making this piece, because I like ceramics on the wall, I'm not, I like to make bowls, but I love to put something on the wall. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I call this the missing piece rebirth. Actually, I have a missing piece here when I was making. Mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking, for me, this is an eye and a piece lost. And, and I just think about life and journey. Sometimes you feel like something is missing and you are around the world looking for some piece for the puzzle you are. Mm -hmm. And could be a place, could be a person, but always you are looking for something, searching the meaning of your life. Mm -hmm. So this is called missing piece and then rebirth. Because mm -hmm. when you find, you rebirth in cycles of life. This represents this. <laughs> we began about where the uh, 